everybody, it's Jane here from True Love Quotes for You. I'm sitting in my front room. I'm going to bring my next tutorial to you folks. And what it is, is a um, little, for your hand sewers, it's a little armchair, a quilted armchair caddy. Okay, what do you think? Um, watching television of an evening time, um, and you, have, you want your, your needle and your threads, a place to put your scraps. So what I've done is I've made this little quilted armchair caddy. Now it can either be, I'm showing it on my, what is this, uh, my left side. Um, so you could have your remotes here. I've made two large pockets or on this side I have made actually six smaller pockets on this side. It can either be for the left or the right hand side. So your remotes would tuck in here and perhaps your uh, tape measure, your seam ripper, a uh, pack of needles would be in, in here on the outside of your chair. Again, I've given you um, specific instructions. This is the tutorial on this armchair caddy today, but I've given you specific instructions for this size. However, I was sitting thinking you could actually make this um, in, uh, if, if somebody knitted, um, you could make the pockets much longer for knitting needles and a skein of yarn. Uh, for some kind of craft, maybe, um, I don't know, even not beading as such, but uh, maybe cross stitch, attach like a large ring, maybe like, a, what would it be like, a, almost like a large key ring for the little embroidery cards. I used to do a lot of embroidery. So you could attach that. And um, it's just of, of sitting, watching TV of an evening time. Um, I've, uh, there's a pin cushion. This pin cushion, I've actually made everything. This pin cushion is not yet affixed. I, I, have, to, I have to fix it. My prototype, which I'm going to show you, I've actually glued some Velcro to the base of the uh, caddy and then some Velcro onto here. But I was actually thinking perhaps you could um, even forgo the making a pin cushion, which I don't love because sometimes the pins go right through. This is just a fiber fill. Oh, I forgot to mention that. You have to get a little bit of fiber fill if you're gonna make this. Um, but like you could get sometimes like a little magnetic pin dish or even a small, a proper like tomato pin cushion, which has the actual steel wool in it to keep your pins and your needles sharpened. Um, that might work a little bit better than this pin cushion here. Um, but I've shown you, I've given the instructions how to make the pin cushion. Uh, spools for two, uh, two spools of thread. But again, you can you could. Uh, customize it to make for maybe three spools, three smaller spools of thread. i show you how to do this. I've actually attached a ribbon. I haven't attached it at this end, but for a pair of scissors because little scissors always go walking. So it's practical as well as pretty. My scrap bag, I've actually made it so you can just detach it and go toss your scraps out, um, you know, for your threads or oh, your, your chocolate or something. Um, so anyway, this is the tutorial we're going to be doing. Just wanted to show you, I actually made this with um, squared off mitered corners. And I did a terrible job. Really bad. <laughs> I don't know how to miter corners, as you know. I don't like mitering corners. On my prototype, which I'm going to be showing you, is I, I actually rounded my corners. I round all the corners of my quilts. But this one I thought with my, I used a purchase bias binding, which on this application I quite like. But... I don't, I don't know how to do the corners. It turned out okay, but don't look closely, but you won't. So anyway, you guys know how to miter corners. Um, th that's, this is this one, but I want to show you, I want to show you my actual prototype, which I was sort of trying to learn on, which is red, which is my favorite color, as most of you know. Tuck that under there. There's my little scrap bag. Um... And then again, this has, I've actually sort of kitted this out. This has a pack of needles, a, a seam ripper, a seam ripper in here, a tape, tape measure. This, this tool, this um, pin cushion is a little bit bigger. And again, stuffed with fiber fill and my thread, a detachable basket. Um, I did make a mistake on my um, showing you how to construct the pockets. I. I, as you know, I don't, I'm not great at math, I cut my pocket lining too big. So uh, I, I do go back and I show you what I've done wrong. Um, 
but I, I, I was thinking about it. When, I've, um, when I started to quilt, and how I quilt is I, um, I just sort of grab fabric and I slice it and I dice it and <laughs> it sort of ends up real good. But I'm not a proper quilt teacher, so I don't know math a lot. So I really, I, me I messed up on this pocket math. I don't know what I did. I really tried to get it right, but I've, I made it um, properly and I corrected my mistake. Um, and also, these pockets here are actually made with um, uh, stiffening interfacing. However, on, on this one, I actually used, because I didn't, I ran out of interfacing and I wasn't about to go battle those shops. I actually, I actually made these pockets with batting. The way I've constructed the pockets with the batting in the tutorial, if you want to, if you want to exchange it for a stiffening iron-on interfacing, which is this one, it's fine. They're both durable. I've reinforced everything. There's, there's no real, um, real difference. This is just slightly softer, but it works exactly the same because again, I've reinforced all my seams. So that's, th that's this little tutorial on, um, my little, my little, uh, my little, um, armchair caddy. Oh, do you know, does anybody recognize this? Yeah, it's my red cord. I needed, I needed a bit of cord. This one I found a piece of ribbon. This I thought, oh, red, I have my, I have my 20,000 yards of red cord. So I attached that. But real practical. Again, um, and I was thinking, you know, as quilters and who, people who like to hand sew, which I can't stand, um, but like of an evening time, you're watching television, you want to hand sew something, um, it would be nice to actually get this given to us as a present, but we're probably, you, you probably know somebody who would like it because it would make a real nice present. It's practical. Your remotes can go in there, all sorts of little bits, patterns. Um, so yeah, that's our, tu that's my tutorial for today. Um, I wanted to say something. Mm, oh, I wanted to say something. Oh, oh yeah. Um, this is actually part one. Uh, as you as you've seen on YouTube, um, it's not a, it's not a tremendously tremendously long tutorial. I've really tried to make it quite succinct, but I did put it into two parts. This is part one of a part two. Um, I think I go up here to uh, attaching the pockets, and then part two is uh, finishing up the binding and the basket and everything. Again, this is optional. You don't have to make that if you didn't want. But I just thought it was practical. Um, I thought this was practical because if you have sewn, where in the world do you put your pins? You stick them in your catch, don't you? You've done it. I know you have. Um, my mother-in-law would have loved this because every every single soft, her, her armchairs and her, her couches were filled with pins. She was, she loved hand sewing. She loved hand sewing. Yeah. And um, so anyway, and, and scissors always have a, have a way of going walkabouts. So I thought that was a real good idea. I actually have a pair of scissors um, attached to my sewing machine on a cord right next to my sewing machine. So they never, ever, they never, ever go missing. So that's our part one tutorial of our quilted arm, our quilted arm caddy, not an arm, uh, not an arm caddy. Well, it could be an armchair caddy. So this is part one, um, and so stay tuned for part two when we finish up our armchair caddy. Okay, thanks. Bye. You've seen my prototype and my finished product, but this is what I'm going to be making um, with this fabric. As you've seen, this is this is what I want to show you what we what we're needing for our project here. I'm going to try to do this fairly quickly for us. For our main fabric, which is this over here, we're going to be needing two pieces, 12 inches by 26 inches, for the body of our caddy. We're also going to be needing one piece, 12 inches by 5 inches, for this pocket here. We're going to be needing two pockets of this fabric, the contrasting fabric, and they are eight and a half by 12 inches. For the lining and the pockets, we're going to be needing one piece, 12 inches by 13 and a half inches, two pieces by 12 inches by 20 inches. We're going to be needing for the pin cushion two pieces, five inches by ten inches of the contrasting fabric. 
for the batting, we're going to be needing one piece, four and a half inches by 11 inches, two pieces, eight inches by 11 inches, one piece, 11 inches by 25 inches. If you would like to make the scrap bag, it's optional over here, the little scrap bag. I've made it a bit smaller. I thought this was a little bit too big. You're going to be needing two, uh, a, one piece of main fabric and one piece of lining fabric, 10 inches by 18 inches, if you want to make the scrap bag. And then we're going to be needing, uh, I just cut off a couple of lengths of a cord elastic and half inch elastic. Uh, for the thread holder and for the scrap basket. You're also going to need for your scissor length, you're going to be need a piece of ribbon. And I, I literally just took this off of a um, fat quarter package. Uh, it was Rowan Fabrics, it was such a pretty ribbon. So I'm just um, recycling that piece of ribbon. That's about the right length. And then you're also going to be needing a, a package, one package of bias tape extra wide double fold for around the edge of our little quilt here. Our first step in making our caddy is we're going to be taking the two main body pieces of the fabric, the 25 to 26 inch long fabrics and the piece of batting which is 11 by 25. And what I've done is I've sandwiched the batting, centered, it's smaller on all sides, which we want, of the, to the wrong side of the back, backing fabric, which is the, the, the same fabric. And then we're going to sandwich the top fabric, which is the same, on. And we're going to go over, if you want to pin this, we want to go over to the machine and we're going to quilt it. Again, if you just refer to my pop, my pot holder, um, my tote bags, I quilt, I like to quilt my fabric. I find the middle and I just go down one and I go over about every inch or so across the top of my quilt. And that's what I'm gonna be doing now to be creating this quilted ba uh, body of the, the caddy. I've quilted my front and my back piece together in one inch strips, uh, one inch lines right across the top of my quilt. And actually what I've done is I've secured the edges of my quilt here, the edges this side and this side. Now what we want to do is either right or wrong sides together, it doesn't really matter. What we want to do is we want to put the top edges together and make sure it's nice and straight on our bottom and be fearless. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting a small curve from about an inch and a half in just to about you, you, however much you want. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to creating be creating this curve here. So I, I just I just literally I just winged it. I just sort of cut a small curve um, on one side and I just eyeballed it. Uh, be brave. I just cut it like this and then cut it a, around like that. That's my curve. I like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it in half and then I'm going to echo. I'm just going to mirror that curve on my other side. So each side has been cut exactly the same. I like that. Do you see that nice curve for the arm of our chair? So there we go. So we've just created that curve there. Now I'm going to be showing you how we're going to be doing the pockets. And I'm going to be, um, I'll just take this over and I'll iron it all nice and flat. Um, I'm going to be showing all the pockets uh, the, same, the same way. And then you can, uh, one pocket, and then you can construct all three pockets the exact same way. For our pockets, they're all going to be constructed the exact same way. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking this piece of fabric here, the main body, the little, the little piece, and put the small piece of batting over it on the right side, on the, on the wrong side of your main body fabric. And then with right sides together, with this size, with which um, the, the five inch by 12 inch, we're going to be sewing on the top 
seam having matched the batting, the pocket top, and the lining top, we're going to be sewing a good, I would say a good uh, three quarters of an inch or so. And that's just going to be giving us this binding look here of our pocket. And then the pocket becomes, it looks a little bit crazy, this becomes the lining inside of our pocket. But what we're going to do is again, on this piece here, on the two large pockets, on these two large pockets, we're going to be taking our batting, which has been cut smaller than our pocket fabric, but we're going to be lining all three edges up, the batting onto the wrong side of our, our um, accent pocket, and then right sides of this to our lining. And we're going to be stitching exactly the same, about three quarters of an inch, even to an inch if you want. You will have plenty of fabric here, and I'll show you how we address this here. It's really something. So three pockets I'm going to be stitching right across the top of our three pockets. Okay, folks. <laughs> you know me and math. I really messed up. Um, okay, first of all, I'll show you what, what I've done. Oh, well, always better to err on the big side. I just, I can't, I couldn't figure this out. But what I've done is, this is correct, this part. Um, I've stitched my almost to an inch on off top three tops of my pockets. The, the reason I do that is when we go to turn, this is, this batting is not going to be in our seam allowance. That's why I do that. But I'll address that later. When we go to turn our pocket outside, this pocket here, we are going to end up with a nice full binding, uh, a nice full bound edge that has batting in it. Okay, that has batting in it. So you pull it right up, but I thought we had to, for some reason, I don't know why I did this, I thought we had to double it. It doesn't work out that way. So I've cut these too big, way too big, all of them I've cut way too big. But that's okay, better to be big. So what, are, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this again now. This is our bound edged pocket. So I like it nice and wide, and that has batting in it. Okay, that has batting in it. That, that inch. So we're going to match up there. There's our pocket. Forget this. I'm going to cut that off. Oh, I don't know math. Oh, go somewhere if you want proper measurements. I really tried. I thought, I thought about it and thought about it. And I, 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 oh, I go stuttering again. I knew my logic. I needed to make this bigger, but I made it miles too big. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this real fairly quickly. Um, there's my lovely pocket right there, and I'm going to go along, and I'm going to just stitch right along that lovely bit of binding right there. And then we have a fully lined pocket, but what I can do, look, I can just cut off this piece of fabric. Oh, geez, whatever. So there's my one pocket. I'm going to stitch this and press it real nice. Sorry, folks, I... I made it too big. I don't, I don't know what my logic was. Oh, whatever. It turns, my stuff turns out, but, and I don't, I'm not cavalier in thinking I'm wasting fabric, but I really did try and that didn't work out. Anyway, here are my three pockets. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go over and I'm going to press real good and I'm going to just stitch right along that ditch. If you want to, you can stitch at the top, but I just like that look right there because this is already filled with batting. Here are my fully lined, uh, batted, batted um, pockets. Um, and now you have to figure out if, um, uh, how you want yourself for your own personal, uh, needs. Um, you may want a pattern to how to can actually configure your, um, pockets, your stitching on this one, on this one that I did is I actually, I actually on my, this pocket here, I actually stitched it to the inner pocket one here and one here and then then I came along and stitched one in the middle and that if you can see has made me four one two three four um, fairly equal sized pockets the inner pocket has just two larger pockets I quite like that because I figure this is just holding my seam ripper pack of needles I, I quite like that so on this configuration here that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to um, 
follow my follow my um my my um center stitching which again is my guideline there's my center stitching for my pocket and then I'll just come over and I think I'll just follow I'll just follow I'll, I'll just pin here now I won't do it on what I'll do I'll show you is I'll take this I'll take this off here because if you notice I'm stitching this outer pocket here to my inner pocket here I want it there I'm going to take this away and I'm going to stitch this line here and this line here to create this pocket, this pocket, this pocket, and this pocket, or to create these two pockets. And then when I go back to stitch it on my main body, that's when I will stitch this line here. Do you understand that? So right now, we're just, we're just stitching up think about, right about there, um, about three inches on each side, over on each side. I'm going to just stitch this pocket to there. As you can see, I've stitched this pocket, just like this, my outer pocket to this one. And I'm just going to now, that's, that's, um, that matches, and it matches along here. We might just want to trim up the bottom just slightly. But now what we're going to do on both sides, this pocket's fine over here. I'm going to be stitching my pocket from the middle my middle um, quilting line, I'm going to reinforce, reinforce as I did here and here, and I'm just going to stitch a straight line right down. So this way I create four pockets here and two larger pockets here. So I'm going to stitch there down, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on my one large pocket. So I'm just going to go from the middle and I'm going to stitch right down, reinforcing at the top, stitching right down. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to secure, which is about a quarter of an inch, I'm just going to secure my pocket to the outside of my caddy. So it's all one piece then. I've stitched my pockets on, reinforcing real good right down the center right here and through there. So I've created one pocket there, one pocket there, one there, one there, and then the four here for my small things. But what, and I've, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm just, I'm quite pleased with the way it's, ha it's um, coming along. I stitched it very, very close, about an eighth of an inch, just to secure my ends down. But I have noticed with quilting, um, it will happen to you, your, 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 some things, some, pieces of your your project will shrink a bit so what we're going to it's not going to affect the the look of it I'm just going to um, take off about about quarter of an inch or so lining up the bottom edge so I have a nice clean edge which to um which to stitch which to stitch around to secure this in I'm going to do that on both sides because it can get a little bit messy so I'm just going to stitch off, I'm going to just make sure it's all, actually this one, oh mate, yeah, that's about half an inch on this side. But that's okay, it's, um, it's, it, uh, it'll make a nice, it'll make a nice clean edge for me to put the binding on. It's quite a bit of fabric, yeah, nice, yeah, that's it. So now, yeah, so now I have a nice clean edge for my, my, um, to put my binding on. But first, also, we want to make sure that our sides are just nice and trimmed up. Just to get off those little loose, loose bits, because um, when we put our binding on, we just want a nice clean edge. So I'll just clean those, that edge up. Um, but now what, we, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be taking our length of, of, um, of elastic. And it's up to you. What I've done on this one here is I've... Um, I've, 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 I've done two pieces of elastic. By all means, you could get a cord elastic and whatever, maybe you have, um, maybe you have small spools of thread. So it's really up to you at this center point. That's where I do it. That's where I've done it right here at this center point to just to secure, um, your thread. However, however you want to do it. If you want the wider stuff, I did it like this. I, I started sort of a uh, halfway between the center line and this one, and I just sort of stitched it like this, and then like that to make my two spools of thread. 
um, but it, that's personal. So you can mess about with it. You might want it just a small cord elastic. Um, so I'm going to be doing it as I've done this one. Again, I just sort of uh, stitched it right there, enclosing that raw edge, and then I figured out where I want with a little bit of a grip where I want my elastic, and then I did another little loop and, and finished it off there. Um, so I'll be doing that a, a little bit in actually because we have to put the binding on. So, th but then, then also what you want to do at this stage after you attach your elastic, you want to just with your ribbon, you just want to put your ribbon, as I did, on the the same edge of my as my um my my uh thread. So it will be like this. So my 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 um scissors will attach and will just go right into that large pocket. So right sides together, my ribbon, if you have a ribbon with right sides together, and I'm just going to reinforce, 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 reinforce that bit of ribbon along there, and then I'll do my, um, I'll do my threads also. And then we're at the point where we can actually bind this part of our quilt because our, our bag and our pincushion are separate. So I'll, I'll, Stitch this along and I'll show you how we do the binding.